And good morning, everybody out there. We're gonna wait till right up on the hour here to get started. I got a little housekeeping notes here that I wanna go over too. So everybody's prepped, but let's give it a minute or two. You know, one of the things um, I, w I learned about doing these things, somebody made a comment, I said, why punish the people who are, who are late? You know, why, why punish the people who are on time or the people who are late? So maybe we should just get started, Mike, and appreciate your time and your, so anyway, I can welcome. Precision Components webinar here, sales training. Uh, Kevin Edwards will be presenting today, but before we get started, I'd like to go over, I'll be monitoring the question box here. Everybody's in the mute mode. So I'll be monitoring the, the question box. I'm gonna turn my camera off, but I'll be here watching the chat and questions. And so if you have anything as we're going along, uh, please write them down. I'll break into Kevin and stop him and see if we can get the question answered as we're talk, covering a topic or we can wait till the end and cover it, just depending on what the question is. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, don't forget, if you'd uh, like to do this for your sales group, uh, lunch and learns are available. Uh, we've got a scheduler at steelrep.com. There's a scheduler tool. You just right at the top, just click on scheduler and, and uh, go and pick the time. It's got our calendar there and we'll uh, be set up and ready to go uh, whenever you choose the time. So. Uh, please feel free to do that. If you like what you see here today, we'll go into more depth with your sales team. Um, let's see, with that, this is Jim Glenn. I'm going to turn it over to Kevin Edwards. I appreciate that, Jim. Welcome, everybody. Uh, um, look forward to talk to you guys today about uh, about us and just kind of what we do and what we uh, what we can do to, to enhance you guys and your business uh, and really just to serve y'all. And that's uh, what it's about. And so just a little background on the company, if you don't know, uh, if you're not familiar with us, uh, there's some, some of you on here might be, but uh, we were founded in 1996. This October will be our 25th year, our official 25 years in business. We are in our 25th year. And so um, we've grown from a, a little, uh, little part of a warehouse with about four employees and four machines. Uh, we've grown to where we are about uh, 85,000 square feet. We've got three different buildings uh, and um, around 90 uh, total employees with most of those uh, being in the shop, uh, either on a machine um, or, or our warehouse and shipping. And so we've grown quite a bit over these 25 years. Uh, a lot of people don't realize how big we are. Uh, um, and I, I, I kind of count that as, as a good thing because we, 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 we're, we're big enough to uh, get good prices, uh, to negotiate with our vendors on, uh, on cost of material and, and, and really to service you guys, but we're also small enough and we kind of keep, a, a, keep our operation small in that we try to be nimble. Uh, and that's really where we serve the market. We're quick we're, and, we're, and, and, and fast. Uh, turnaround is kind of where we fit in the market. That's kind of our niche uh, and that's what we're known for. And so we just try to provide great service. We, we always want to have that connection with our customer, with our client, uh, that we're taking care of them. Uh, and it's not even just taking care of you guys. Uh, one of the best best things we love to hear is that we uh, we made you guys look like a rock star to, to your customer. Uh, and we get that feedback quite a bit. And that's really that's when we know we've done we've done well. We've we've, we've met a need. We have uh, we've accomplished something uh, in a quick time, and done it with quality uh, and excellence, and hopefully uh, satisfied uh, a need in the market, a need for your customer, and got them out of a bind. And that's really where uh, that's really where we want to be in the market, and that's really where we uh, find ourselves. Um, we. Uh, we are in Houston again, so uh, we're not here because of the weather. If you've been to Houston, you know that. So about you know five months out of the year, it's pretty brutal in the summers. Um, and so that's not why we're here, but we're here because there's just, uh, there's just about every kind of material that you can find here. And so, and most of that we can get within a day, uh, sometimes the same day. Uh, a lot of it actually we can get the same day, depending on what it is. And, uh, how much needs to be cut or whatnot. And, uh, this is a, a list of some of the materials, not exhaustive, but it, it covers a good gamut of, of what's available here in town that we have access to, uh, ready access to, uh, with just a phone call or an email. And so 
this helps us keep that quickness, that, that nimbleness that, uh, that helps us serve you guys uh, out there better. And so again, uh, our, our motto is, uh, or kind of a saying around the office is, if we can't get a, a couple of two inch swedges out the door today, if it's not possible, then, then there's probably something wrong. We need to look, we need to look at our operation or we need to look at, uh, we need to take a deep dive into some portion of what we're doing uh, if that's something we can't do. And so uh, that's, again, we're really where we fit. That's our niche uh, in the market. And so that's really where we're gonna add value to you guys. Uh, that's not the only place, but that's probably one of the main places. Uh, see a list of the people, uh, some of the refineries uh, and distributors that we are on the AML for. Uh, most of those we fit in those categories uh, as the non-standard or miscellaneous category on an AML. Uh, that is the perfect place for us. We love that category. That gives us the calls for the weird stuff. The strange stuff, the non-standard, uh, non-commodity type items, uh, and it's a great place for us to be, and it's really where we where we desire to be on these lists. Uh, that's not to say that we can't do the commodity things. We can, uh, but really our value is when you can't find it or you need it fast and it's just not available. Uh, that is really where we come in. That's really where we're going to be competitive in the market. Uh, and that's where we're going to best serve you guys. And so uh, we're uh, just back to the AMLs. We are constantly uh, uh, finding ourselves applying to new AMLs. Uh, we're actually regularly finding ourselves on AMLs we didn't even know that we were on. And so uh, this this list is an exclusive. We would love to actually be added on to more AMLs uh, because the more we're on, the better we can serve uh, you guys and, and our customer base, uh, the more options they have, we're an option for them uh, to get them, again, to, to, to solve a problem, to solve an issue for them or their customer. You got jump, something, Jim? Jump in there, Kevin, about, you know, saying, I, know, I don't know, just to reiterate this verbally, is the fact that we do only sell through resellers of product, distributors and service centers. So uh, we rely on you guys to get to the end users and let us know if we are or are not on a list thereby helping you out sell more product in your markets. Absolutely. Yes. We, we do not deal with end users, the refineries directly. Uh, we have been, we've been approached quite a bit. Uh, some want to go directly to us. Uh, that's just not, that's not what we do. We, we, uh, we work strictly through distributors um, and or fab shops, uh, but never to the end user. And so, uh, yes, we, we do honor that. We, we protect those relationships. Uh, very well. And so uh, just another thing just to cover too, uh, we're also ISO certified and we're also PED compliant uh, because we don't actually manufacture raw material. That's a different compliance thing, but we are PED, PED compliant. We can bring in PED certified material from PED, or PED material from PED certified uh, mills, uh, bringing it in here and we do the work machine and, and it actually still uh, meets the requirements of PED uh, certification. So we're, we are PD, PED compliant machine shop. Uh, and so we get that request uh, quite, quite a bit as well, uh, just for a little knowledge out there. And so uh, uh, here's some of the fitting, or excuse me, some of the product categories that we, uh, that we produce. Uh, these are not, again, not exclusive, but these are some of the highlights of the ones that we uh, we do on a regular basis. And so, uh, again, I just want to point out, uh, if it's going to be on the shelf, if you can find it on the shelf, that's, we're probably not going to be good there. It's the things that you can't find on the shelf or you're never going to find on the shelf. Uh, those are the ones that, that, that we're going to be best at. And that includes the pressure fittings, the bubble fittings, uh, and those types of products. Can I throw a quick quick comment in here, a real question? Does anybody have any one of these products that they'd like to spend more time on or get a little more in-depth knowledge about? Put it in the questions, and I'll, I'll get back to you, Kevin, and let you do a little deeper dive into a particular product. product. Yeah, that, that's great, Jim. Uh, and while, while people think about that or answer that, I'm, uh, I don't, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on here. I don't, I don't want you guys jumping on this webinar thinking that you're in here for an hour and a half. 
Uh, that's not that's not what we're here to do. This is a general webinar, and so I'm going to touch on these just a little bit, just give you an idea of, of what we do and why uh, uh, why we're a good source for you on these uh, particular ones. But we're not going to spend a ton of time. And so, uh, if there's no other questions or comments, we'll go ahead and move forward. Uh, so pressure fittings, obviously, uh, probably most of you guys deal with pressure fittings to some degree. Again, you're going to find a lot of these on the shelf and that's great uh, it's when you can't uh, find it on the shelf or it's just a you've got a, a unusual combination and what i mean by that is if your ends you have a socket well by thread uh, or you need a socket well by thread on the run and then a, you know a, maybe even a different size thread on the branch of this t that we're looking at uh, that's where we can come in and so we do stock some forgings uh, again we're not a forging house but we're going to have uh, a thousands and thousands of different uh, sizes of forgings on the floor. We keep just enough to make some of the, again, some of those strangers, stranger things that you might come across. And so we'll have some forgings, uh, mainly uh, in 316, 304, uh, and some uh, 2205, we have uh, T's and 90's, uh, usually ranging from about two inch threaded and down. Uh, and so, uh, they come and we bring them in solid. So we actually don't have them, uh, they're, they're compatible with two inches down. So we don't have, uh, we don't have finished forgings on the shelf. And so well, why we do that is that gives us the flexibility to make them how you want them or how you need them versus just having a two inch threaded, a T on the shelf. We can actually make a, whatever combination of ends that you guys need, uh, they get your customer out of our mind. And so that's how we, we stock these. We actually uh, stock some smaller ones. Uh, it's actually three quarter inch threaded and down and um, C276, alloy 400, alloy 20. Uh, we keep some of those. Those are the ones we see the most, the most common, which is why we decided to stock those. Uh, if we do see an upgrade in, in, uh, or an uptick in any of those, then we're always open to bringing in some more forgings. Uh, another way we machine these is from block or bar. And so uh, some of that, that might cause some people some pause. Uh, we don't do it. Uh, we always tell you what we're supplying. Uh, and a lot of times in, in where we fit in the market, because it's an emergency, it's fast, or we need it fast, we need it in, in two days, uh, an engineer will sign off in a, in, a, in a New York minute on a block fitting, whether that's from a, from a forged block a rectangle block or a piece of round bar even. And so uh, obviously they're going to look a little different uh, and, and than a forging. Uh, and so, you know, forging has got a shape to it, uh, whereas a block fitting is going to look more like this. So uh, the question is, does it, does it meet the dimensions? And yes, so the center to ends and all of the critical dimensions that, that, that B1611 uh, uh, or the other specification to call out it's always going to meet those it's just going to be typically heavier uh, and it's going to look different and so we try to be up front not try to be we are up front when we provide these or this is what we're offering so that there's no surprises on your end or your customer's end uh, when they receive them and uh, there's usually no surprise when they see the cost because obviously machining them from a piece of block or bar is going to be more expensive than a, a, a forging that you bought you know ten thousand of uh, and it's, it's been sitting on the shelf. And so uh, both this really applies to the pressure fittings and the butt wheel fittings. We do the same. A lot of the times we can make uh, those fittings uh, from the forgings if they're small enough. Uh, as you can see by this picture here, we are actually, uh, uh, that's a reducing. Uh, I can't really tell from the picture, but it's a pretty good size reduction uh, on, the, on the branch there. And so that's what we're able to do. And we're able to turn these out pretty quickly because you might only need one or two of those. And, and we can, on a regular, at, at this time and where the market is, I can probably knock a couple of those out, uh, just regular, no expedite piece, you know, probably four or five days, maybe three to four days, just depending on what the material is. Uh, but that doesn't mean I can't knock it out today, uh, depending on what time I get the order uh, or, or, or that works tomorrow. And so the, again, that's where we fit in and that's kind of where the value is um, for us. And so we have nipples, wedges, uh, not gonna go ton into that. 
uh, but we do we actually uh, do pretty well and pretty competitive with our swedges uh, and their SP uh, MSS SP 95 they've been through all the testing and so they we can certify them to that and so we really see a combination ends is really where we see a lot of, of movement for the swedges um, where you have a schedule 80 on the small end schedule 50, schedule 40 on the large end um, and the of course, the combination ends. They're not just threaded or plain. We could have threaded by bevel. Uh, we could have brew. Uh, we can do all sorts of combinations of ends. Uh, and again, we have that flexibility uh, in the market and we can do it fast. And it's not something you have to wait three, four, five, six, eight weeks on uh, to get from a typical manufacturer. Uh, another thing that isn't up here that I'd like to point out too is that uh, we see quite a bit of these. And these are. Uh, Hose bar, KC nipples, you may hear uh, heard of. And so we make them, I've made them in you think from carbon to to C276. I've made these. I've made I've made some up to uh, in stainless, I've made them up to I think 10 inch, uh, 10 inch KC nipples or hose hose bar nipples, uh, depending on what terminology you're used to. And so that would fall in that category also. And so plugs, bushing, same thing. Obviously, a standard plug you're going to find on the shelf. Um, again, where we're going to come in is if there is a specific, uh, what we see a lot is there's a specific material requirement. Uh, also, uh, you find a lot of these on the shelf and they're cast. And so that they're going to be hollow in the middle. People want solid plug and we're going to be able, be able to provide that. Uh, we also see plugs with uh, different threads than just MPT. We may see a BSPT or a BSPP uh, or a metric thread uh, that, that is needed and you just can't find those on the shelf. And that would go the same for uh, your uh, bushings uh, where you may have a combination. You may have MPT on the male side, but they want a, you know, a, B, a female BSPT or BSPP on the internal thread. And so we can do uh, those and again we just have that flexibility to do either uh, any of that and again we cover the gamut of materials as well and so we see them from anything from carbon again to some of the nickel alloys. Uh, again we we can make them make them quickly uh, unions uh, really the same thing as I've been saying uh, with some of the other things uh, but weld unions sometimes you get a combination but weld union where it's it needs to be a heavier schedule on one side than the other. Uh, that's not super common, but we do see it. Um, uh, I've seen uh, uh, threaded by socket weld. I've actually seen male by female uh, on the unions. We, we, we have to make those. Uh, we do uh, orifice unions as well. We typically do a cupped plate or tabbed plate um, in the orifice unions. Again, we can make those to any kind of orifice that you need. Uh, and again, covering the uh, materials. Uh, also hammer unions, uh, we don't see a ton of those, but we can do them. Actually, we just made a few fairly good size ones, uh, three and four inch uh, hammer unions. And so we completely make those solid, so they're really strong and good. Uh, we turn them around pretty quickly, three or four days. There were some, there was, uh, some pretty big ones. Um, uh, and that's a lot of, that's a lot of machining on a, uh, I wish you would have one on here to show you if, you, if you're not familiar with the, the hammer union basically it's got three big lugs on the nut uh, the nuts actually ground with some three lugs so that you can take a sledgehammer to it and 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 tighten that sucker down so we do uh we do those as well uh next we would have uh just the, all the flanges um and so uh it's ANSI it, it, again just keep in mind this isn't stuff that you're going to find on the shelf it's when you can't find it on the shelf Maybe a strange bore. It may not be a standard bore at all, uh, and I don't mean standard by like Schedule 40 or 40, uh, 40s. Uh, I actually mean it may they need an ID or a wall thickness that isn't doesn't exist in the wild. Uh, it's a custom wall thickness. Uh, we do see that quite a bit on say a, a maybe a weld neck flange uh, where the wall thickness is custom. They need a, a specified wall thickness that doesn't match to a regular pipe size schedule pipe uh, and so we'll see that uh, orifice flanges we do those uh, we make them from scratch sometimes we can modify if the flange is big enough 
you have something on the shelf, and I'll talk a little bit more about that further on, uh, but if you have a flange on the shelf that can actually be converted into uh, an oral flange, we can do that as well. And that gets you some inventory off the shelf, uh, plus saving you a little bit of money than, uh, than us making it fully. Uh, API flanges, we can make API flanges per uh, API dimensions. We do not have an API stamp, and uh, pretty much everybody knows that when they come to us, uh, but they need a material that's not 4130 or uh, carbon steel. They're needing stainless or uh, some other grade, and uh, that's where we'll come in. So we'll actually make a weld neck for uh, 316, 304 uh, and to API dimensions. And we try to always specify we don't have an API stamp. Uh, again, most of our customers that come to us know those. Uh, SA, uh, SAE, uh, those are typically hydraulic applications. You would find those on uh, turbines and, and, and things like that. I do a ton of those. Personally, I do a, quite a few of those uh, here in, in, in that precision. Uh, JIS, DIN flanges, those are a little bit, uh, those are Japanese and then uh, DIN is more of like a um, European or British. Um, DIN flanges often probably cause the most confusion. Uh, just a little quick tip on those. Uh, some people try to cross over ANSI and DIN flanges, and that doesn't work that way. So they'll try to tell me, hey, I need a six inch, or I, I need a, uh, excuse me, I'll need a six inch uh, PN25. Actually, that's not too bad. It's when they say, I need a DN25 150 pounds. Or I need a DN 200, 150 pound. Well, there's no direct correlation on the pressure class uh, between the PN number and an and a, and a ANSI pressure class. And so people try to get, sometimes get those mixed up or try to do a hybrid. Uh, and there, there's actually not a hybrid. Uh, the bolt pattern's different. Bolt holes, bolt holes are actually different. The OD of the flange is different. Thickness is different. And so uh, it's very important to know that, uh, to know that. <laughs> when when uh, when calling those out, but yeah, we can do all of those uh, again. Combination boards, combination sizes, re reducing flanges, uh, uh, expanding flanges. We've done um, we've done all of those, uh, and again, that's kind of where where we fit in. Some of those odd, strange things. Uh, spectacle blinds, bleed rings. Uh, yep, do quite a bit of those. I do also do quite a few bleed rings uh, come across my desk. And uh, if you don't know what a bleed ring is, I'll show you one real quick. Uh, maybe not something you mess with or you've seen and just wasn't sure where to find it. We can do those. This particular one is uh, an RTJ bleed ring. This is not super common, uh, which is why we pulled it. But uh, you can see it's got the uh, RTJ groove there. Uh, but what you also see is it has a little port. Uh, it's going to be a half inch MPT. That's standard. Um, but these basically, you see no bolt holes, they actually fit in between the bolt holes of two flanges uh, and does exactly what, what what's called the bleed ring. And so there's usually a, a, a bleed valve connected to this port and then it gives uh, operators out in the field uh, an easy way to bleed off a line uh, if they're having to do maintenance or work on it uh, or just take a sample out of the line as well. So we do a ton of those, 316, 304 carbon, uh, very rarely do I see these in any other thing, any, anything but those three, but we could do them in all. Uh, I've, I've actually made a few in, in C-276, uh, but spectacle bond, same thing. We're gonna make those, uh, depending on size, we make them from plate, we make them from round bar. Um, uh, but typically it's gonna be odd balls. Uh, you can find the 150 pound, 300 pounds, uh, a lot of times on the shelf. Uh, when you get to larger sizes and higher pressure classes, those are a lot harder to come across uh, and find. And so we've uh, we've made those either from plate. Um, usually, when they're larger size, they kind of they kind of get outside of the bar range, the round bar size that you can get. And so we can make those from plate. Sometimes they're big enough where we can we can get a ring forging uh, and a disc forging in here and uh, and make the uh, make the spectacle line uh, that way. And so. Uh, for our next one, we have uh, orifice plates. We talked about orifice flanges briefly a minute ago. Uh, orifice plates actually go in between orifice flanges. You may know that. I'm not. Uh, I don't want to talk to you like you don't. Uh, but there may be some people on here that do not. And so we actually stock um, from like two inch, 150 pound, and down in 316. That's the most common uh, material that we found. 
uh, that people request. And so uh, again, that's not exclusive. We won't uh, not quote you if it's a different material. That's just pretty common. So we stock them and we bring them in. We have a, a good relationship with a, a plate house that will actually laser cut these out for us, you know, 50, 100 at a time. Uh, and they come in blank with no hole. And so uh, you can tell us whatever orifice size you need and we can, we can, we can punch it out. If you need one the same day, a lot of times we can do it in the same day. Uh, we can, even if we don't have a plate, we can get it in the same day. Hey, Kit, I might have to jump in here real quick before I move on to outlets. Yep. Um, just was looking at maybe throwing a poll up here uh, real quick and see if we can get some responses from the folks. Uh, I'm going to launch a poll here and uh, see. Okay, I don't know. Can you see the poll there, Kev? Yes. Okay, good, because it uh, doesn't show on it. looks like it's. Uh, I'm stopped sharing my screen and put the poll up there. So uh, we'll give a couple seconds for people to respond. And then we'll put it back and see. So the question is, is would it be beneficial for us to um, show you how to how we manufacture our products? And we're getting, uh, looks like the responses are going 100% yes. So yeah, there's another, I'm gonna close the poll and thank everybody for responding and let Kevin get back to the outlets then. Awesome. Good deal, good poll. Uh, outlets, this is, uh, I don't know. This is one of uh, this is one of our favorites. We do tons of these. Uh, this particular one probably defies what I've kind of been saying, uh, where you can't find it on the shelf. Uh, that's where we're going to be best. But we actually are really competitive in in our outlets, and so that from anything from the welded to the threaded, of course the the the, the common terminology, threadlet, weldlet, sockle those are really trade names. Uh, but most people still call them that uh, regardless. Uh, we kind of have our own trade name for those uh, uh, once we went through testing and <clears throat> uh, all of our outlets are SP, uh, MSS SP97 certified. So they've been through all the testing. We actually call them transets. You can call them whatever you want when you when you request them. We know we, we know what you need, but uh, we actually run, we'll run stocking programs for these. And so uh, a lot of people are still looking for that US made uh, product. Um, uh, probably not gonna do really be super competitive with you know, the ones you're buying from China. Um, but again, we're seeing more and more every day of needing domestic or North American manufactured parts. Uh, see a lot of domestic melt and manufacture even uh, on a lot of these. And so we can, uh, uh, we could definitely do some stock sizes of that. Uh, I know on, on there it said half inch to 24 inch. We can actually go a little bit bigger. I've done some 30 inch, uh, 30 inch um, weld uh, weld transeds as I'll call them, to, just to not to infringe on the trade name. Uh, I've uh, been able to do some of those. Uh, it turned out really really well. Made them out with forging. Uh, it actually turned out great. Uh, but yeah, we we we're really on the stocking side, we're typically in that half inch to, to two inch uh, range is really where uh, where we see the stocking and most of that stocking occurring in 304, 316. Uh, but again, we can make them in anything. We do see quite a bit of OLEDs and, uh, and other materials, especially some of the nickel grades. And so uh, if you actually come across this or maybe you're buying these already from someone, we would like a shot at it uh, to see how we are <clears throat> and we're, you know, we, we, we can negotiate and, and, uh, and look at that and make sure our price point is where, where it needs to be. Uh, and we'll let you know if we can't do it, but uh, we'll take that all the way to the top to the ownership if need, if need be. And we, we have done that in the past to, to see if we can land a, land a, a stocking job for you. Uh, <clears throat> One of the things you just yep. made a comment there real quick, Kevin, you, you made it if, if we can't do it. Uh, I think on all the products, one of the things that's trying to drive home here today before we finish is it, it, bring it to us. Uh, and if we can't do it for you, we will help you find a home for it. So uh, yeah. we're good at that as well. Not just if we can't do it, help you, then we'll find somebody to help you. Yeah, yeah, we do. Uh, and thanks for bringing that because that's something else I wanted to say. And I'll just kind of interject that here. Uh, at least not too out of a place, but. Uh, we really want you guys to not have to no quote anything. 
Um, and so we try not to. There's going to be times where it's just out of our capacity. Uh, but when when we do that, we do try to find, uh, we do try to at least point you in the direction of someone that might be able to help you. We know where we fit in the market. We don't try to be something we're not. And so uh, we're okay with saying, hey, we're not going to be good at that, but this company is. And so, again, it's all about serving you guys and trying to solve a problem for you. Uh, and so if we can even just point you in a direction where your problem is going to be solved, we feel like we, we, we've succeeded. And so, uh, so that's my request. That's the big ask for today is to not no quote, uh, to, to, to stop doing no quotes. If you have a, something that you would typically no quote, send it to us. Let us look at it. Let us, you know, pour over it. We might, uh, what, what seems odd to you may be completely feasible for us to do. And so we would love to give you the opportunity to, to be a hero, to be a rock star to your customer uh, by um, <clears throat> offering something to them that you typically wouldn't. Uh, and so that's just, a, I'm interjecting that here in the middle of this, but uh, uh, let's go on. Insert branch connections. Uh, this is kind of a, an offshoot of, of uh, the outlets. <clears throat> These are a little different because they don't sit on top of a piece of pipe like an outlet does, and I'll show you so this is a threaded outlet and it would sit on top of a piece of pipe. You can see that and it's got a bevel there where you can weld it on the pipe. Well, a, uh, an insert branch connection works a little different. And so it looks some, something like this, kind of like what's in, in your picture. And so it actually uh, replaces the wall of the pipe and they make these uh, uh, to make the pipe a little bit stronger. And so instead of just having a weld, this is actually a weld on the external part of the pipe. This actually gives you a full penetration into the pipe wall and actually becomes a part of the pipe wall. Uh, because we all know that when you weld something on a piece of pipe, usually the thing that's the weakest is the pipe itself. And so this helps reinforce that. This is, let me rephrase or just reiterate, this isn't a saddle or a reinforcing uh, weld saddle as they're, they're called. Uh, these do not sit on the pipe. We actually, we try to stay away from those. We would offer this in its place. But uh, again, these are fit to match the idea of whatever pipe that uh, that you're trying to put this in. And so uh, this is another good one for us. And we see these, again, in all kinds of materials uh, from carbon to, to uh, even some of the nickel alloys. Uh, studying outlets. Uh, you may, you guys may be familiar with studying outlets. Those, uh, the one pictured here is actually a, a very, very strange one. Uh, it's actually fitting onto a piece of pipe that the OD of the pipe is smaller than the flange OD. Uh, that isn't uncommon for us to see. Uh, <clears throat> though we do see a lot of studying outlets that are flat. Uh, this is another good product line for us. We see a ton of these. And so that lets us know that we're competitive and we get them out quicker than most people do. And so these are flat. Uh, commonly they're flat. That's how they come, but they, uh, they're they also um, can be radius to fit on uh, either a, a tank um, uh, or a pipe as, as it is here, uh, or even a head, like a, a, a large cap. And so we can make all of those. Uh, when you call those out to us, just let us know, hey, this is shell mount, which typically is uh, either on a pipe or on a vessel where it's kind of saddling on top of it <clears throat> or if it's head mount. And so th that actually helps us determine how much material we're going to need because they're obviously just going to make them a little bit longer. Uh, but yeah, we do these daily. There's study outlets coming from our shop every single day. Uh, I've made, uh, I think, up to six. No, I think I made up 20 inch, uh, 150 pound studding outlets out of out of a ring forging, and so we have those capabilities of doing that. Uh, when you start talking about the forging ring forging, so they take a little bit longer. Uh, there's really not material out there to make those uh, off the shelf um, uh, very quickly, uh, but we're quicker than typical forge forging guy would would make them. We could probably make them in three weeks versus uh, five to six weeks, eight weeks, ten weeks that you're getting from a, a forging guy. Uh, uh, beyond our products, we actually have services here, and these are just value adds for for you guys. And so, uh, threading would be one of them. And so, uh, I won't go into specifics for all of these. I'm trying to highlight them all. 
uh, we could thread a flange. Maybe you have a blind flange on the shelf and you need uh, you need a tap put in it. Uh, you're wanting to make it um, you're wanting to make it a, a reducing threaded flange. Well, we can do that. Uh, and so the advantage for you guys is that you have something on the shelf. Maybe it's been sitting there a while. You can get it off your shelf. Uh, so you can clear out some inventory and uh, and get the product you need at the same time. And so we do a lot of this uh, where we're socket welding, blind flanges, or threading blind flanges, uh, and turning them uh, and making a different product. And we're using your material or uh, you're sending us the material for us to do the work. We call those our labor jobs. We do that uh, every day. There's labor jobs coming out of here. People bringing this pipe to thread. Um, we can thread uh, <clears throat> we can thread full random lengths of pipe uh, up to six inch pipe, and so we could actually thread that. Uh, once we get above six inch, then we we're, we're restricted by size because we don't have the machine that'll uh, let the pipe pass through. But we can we can thread full randoms or single random lengths of pipe up to six inches. Uh, bore change uh, that would apply uh, also to your Flanges, uh, if you've got a taper bore of a flange, you need to go from schedule 80 to 40 or schedule 80 to 10. Uh, we can do that. Uh, we can actually do bore changes on fittings, uh, whether those are bubble T's or 90's or 45's. Uh, we can actually uh, do some taper boring uh, on those as well. And we get those uh, pretty regularly. Uh, we bore changes, anything you can think of, probably it can, it has a bore in it that can be changed, we can do it. Swedges, uh, Reducers, comp reducers, eccentric reducers, we can do that. Uh, flange modification, I talked about uh, that a little bit earlier. You take a flange, um, uh, sometimes you may have one that has already been made, it's coming from overseas and it's been shipped over and they didn't protect it very well. And so maybe you got some nicks on the neck uh, or some scratches on the face. We can, uh, we, you can send them to us, we can bring them in and we can try to fix those for you. Uh, we'll let you know if it's going to uh, mess with the tolerances too much, just really depending on how they were made. Uh, we'll try to be upfront with that. Hey, this is what it's going to require to get this right, but we can do it uh, uh, from your existing inventory. Uh, product modification, uh, that's another one we see a lot of. And so maybe you have a, a, a nine inch, or excuse me, a six inch, uh, six inch butt weld uh, 90 sitting on the shelf, uh, but you've got a request for some six inch. Uh, but well, 45s. Well, uh, maybe those 90s have been sitting there a while. Well, we can bring those here. We can cut them and, and convert those 90s into a 45. Uh, and we, and while at the same time maintaining all the dimensions that would need to be uh, need to be accurate to, to accurately meet a 45 degree uh, elbow. And so, again, you get to take a product off your shelf that's existing. Uh, repurpose it to meet your customer's need. Again, we're helping you look like a, a superhero to your customer and uh, hopefully solving a problem for them and getting repeat business back for you guys. And so that's really where that's where we're at. And so just to kind of a summary, you know, I mentioned this at the beginning, we're, we're small enough to, to, to meet your needs, to care about you and build relationships. We have great relationships with our, with our uh, customers. Uh, we're not uh, we're not robots over here. Uh, every one of our salespeople um, <clears throat> is in contact regularly with customers. Uh, we're not some just call center. Uh, we actually talk to our customers, whether that's via email or on the phone, uh, daily. And so we we really do care uh, about you guys and and your customer and meeting the needs of them uh, and you. And so we just. We just have, we have strong customer relationships. That's really where our focus is. Uh, if we're not doing that right, then we're not doing our job. Uh, and our sales team is very well versed. Uh, there's not, uh, I can't think of anyone that has less than 10 years on a desk here uh, at Precision Components. And if they do, uh, they've been here for much longer than that and have experience outside of even the office. And a lot of our guys have actually spent time out in the shop. They know the parts, they know how they're made. Uh, they know what it takes to make them. And so there's a lot of knowledge here for you guys to, to glean off of. And so I'll throw this back over to Jim. If you have any questions, you can throw them in there yeah, now. No, they're all good. No, I'm good. Thank you very much. Great, great presentation. I just want to do two things. 
Uh, first, a reminder that we have lunch and learns available for your sales teams. So if you feel that this is productive, we'd love to get like one-on-one -on -one with you guys. We do Zoom calls where, where we actually dialogue back and forth throughout the presentation, um, and, you know, and buy a lunch or, as well. So please reach out to us if you feel like that's uh, a good tool for your sales team for education on these types of products. Yep. Um, uh, secondly, I guess throw out uh, uh, how you can uh, LinkedIn. I get Precision Components is on LinkedIn. Kevin Edwards, Jim Glenn are both on LinkedIn as well. Um, and you got an Instagram PC account. What's yep. the name? We're on Instagram. We try to throw up. <clears throat> we try to throw up some pictures of really cool stuff. I'm not going to throw up boring pictures. <laughs> I try not to. So there, there may not be a <clears throat> may not be daily posts. Uh, but we'll throw up some cool things that we've made uh, just just so people can see them, get an idea of what the uh, capabilities that we have. So some people think and forget that we can uh, we can do things that are outside of the norm. And, uh, just kind of backpedal a little bit, Jim. I hope that's okay. Uh, I forgot to mention that we can do uh, uh, not just standard industry products that are ANSI and uh, ASTM type product. We can actually do customer specific uh, uh, make customer specific uh, parts based on their drawings. Uh, we do sign NDAs and we do all of that. And so we make quite a bit. Uh, we make quite a few products for um, for customers that are specific to that are proprietary to a company where the you know uh, it's their own engineered drawing and it, it may have B sixteen point five dimensions, but there may be some nuances to a flange that that is specific to a process that a customer has designed for themselves or for, for their end user. And so we do those as well. So if you come across a drawing, you get a drawing in your inbox and you don't know where to go because it's not something you can buy off the shelf. Uh, yeah, let us know. We'd love to take a crack at it. Yeah, thank you very much, Kevin. Uh, also, uh, we're going to be keeping an eye out for these things. We're trying to put together a shop tour. Uh, so we'll do a little shop tour uh, presentation to walk you through the shop. We may have a little uh, um, in informational talk on uh, dimensions and tolerances and specs. Uh, do that for the different products that we have. And uh, then also just how we make products. Do another one how we make products. So keep keep an eye out for that. And uh, with that, I thank you for showing up today. And Kevin, thank you very much for the presentation. Good to be here. To see you guys soon. Have a wonderful afternoon. See you guys later.